with the aim of ensuring an economic boost. Nadja Atutijani, MTA News. In Ceylon security matters, the FCT Minister Mohamed Musabellu has commended heads of security agencies for the improvement in security recorded over the last one month. The minister who gave the commendation at a security meeting for the month of November acknowledged that a number of incidences involving kidnapping were averted with the cooperation of security operatives and citizens. Ifani Ezumba reports. City Minister Mala Mohamed Mosabelu pointed out that from the number of arrests that have been recorded over the past few weeks, a criminal network has been cracked. Arrests made during the last few weeks. I think we are now getting to the point where we are able to crack the network. And as you can see, the network is not just within the FCT, it's spread across neighboring states. FCT Commissioner of Police, Sonde Babaji, urged residents to be security conscious, especially in the Ember Moons, while assuring of adequate security during the upcoming end of year activities. population with all the stakeholders here present, we continue to do our best. You know, our majors, we don't disclose it on air, but this is a, this is a security reserve. But I'm assuring the residents of FCT that by the grace of God, we are going to have a real free celebration. Fundamentally, whatever society you belong to, the educational background of such a society makes development fastly and crippling the, cripple the, uh, the foundation of the education at that level is crippling the nation's development. The FCT administration had also appealed to the FCT wing of the Nigerian Union of Teachers to call off its ongoing strike, which currently affects primary schools managed by the local education authorities, LEA, in the area councils, adding that the bedrock of education is the primary school system in Abuja. Ifani Isumba and Tinis. The, the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, is poised to leverage on the quantum of academics in the diaspora to establish a research development center in the quest to proffer solutions to the country's challenges. NITCOM Chairman Abike Dabriarewa stated this while soliciting partnership with Setfund as a recent advocate of research. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports. We now go to Benin and Agatha is our guide. How are you, Agatha? Thank you, Lamy, for joining us in Benin. Now, for the past three days, there's practically no easy connection between the southwest and the south south parts of the country, with hundreds of cars and heavy duty trucks trapped along Benin Sapia Road following youth protest. They are requesting the federal government to effect urgent repairs on the road, which has claimed lives and paralyzed economic activities in the area. Good luck in Naini reports. The deplorable condition of the road has been on for some time now. Users of the road spend days and hours trying to gain access, but to no avail. The situation has claimed many lives, some important appointments missed, with the economic activities of the people slowed down. Youths in the area barricaded the road, preventing motorists' access. Not even the NTA crew was spared. The youths who refused to grant any interview threatened to destroy NTA vehicle. A resident in the area in a telephone conversation appealed to the relevant authorities to step in as the situation at hand may degenerate into lawlessness. If somebody died, he fell because of the road up and the black man was trying to maneuver. I don't know whether he ran on that trailer, or it was a trailer that failed break. They said about three persons have done it. The situation there, if you see it in the evening, around maybe four, five, it should be way people that are going to worry. They'll be looking for other ways to start. People are straight. So if you see it, the road that the 
is actually constructed. It's off the road, so it's ordinary grass. So everywhere is full of uh, gullies. Before now, there has been a series of protests by civil societies and concerned youths to draw government attention to the deplorable condition of the Benin Sapele Road. The federal controller of works in Edo State, when contacted on telephone about the situation, said he has alerted the headquarters of the Federal Ministry of Works in Abuja. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. More than 800,000 Nigerians have benefited from the 56.84 billion Naira medium and small scale enterprises MSME Survival Fund scheme of the Buhari led administration to boost the sector. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ni Adebayo, gave the indication at the 13th National Council on Industry, Trade and Investment Forum held in Aduikiti. Kola Adebobui has the report. In a renewed effort to expand collaboration with private sector to create jobs for Nigerian youth in fulfillment of the job creation objective, Otumba Adebayo notes that the President Mamadou Bari led administration as identified micro, small, and medium enterprises as a sure way to diversify the nation's economy and emancipate the country from overdependence on revenue from crude oil. The minister said government will always create an enabling environment for small and medium enterprises to thrive. It is important to note that the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is an important pillar in the diversification of the nation's economy. Considering the new wave in Nigeria's economy, there is need to effectively position our MSMEs to be able to competitively exploit the global market. The state governor, Dr. Kairi Fayemi, observed that the state government has focused on activities targeted at improving SMEs aside attracting investment initiative for social economic development. Highlight of the program was the flag off and campaign for patronage of made in Nigerian products and services in the southwest Nigeria, an economic recovery and growth plan strategy program of the federal government. In Adwekiti, Kola Adebobuji, News. That's it here. Lamy, you're on. Many thanks, Agatha. As the tenure of the current Director General of the International Labour Organization is coming to an end, Nigeria has begun consultations on the best candidate for the position among the five countries vying for the post. Considering Nigeria's position as a member of the ILO governing board with the government, workers and employers' representatives, the country has three votes, which is attracting lobbying by candidates. The first caller to seek Nigeria's three votes is the Deputy Director General of the ILO, Greg Vines, led by the Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador John Donnelly. pay gaps, employment gaps, uh, the other gaps that are gender-based, as well as, as I indicated before, the challenges of young people, the challenges of uh, the people with disabilities, the challenges related to labour migration must, must be addressed as well. We have, as a country, decided that the best candidates will win. The best candidates will get our votes, and uh, we look forward to getting others to also sell their manifesto like you. Since the workplace has been largely affected by the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, Labour Minister says Nigeria's choice will be based on whoever will improve the fortunes of the informal sector badly hit by the pandemic. Now, the National Centre for Women Development has trained over 100 women in various artisan professions, largely dominated by the male folks. Elizabeth Omarui brings us the details of the latest grand graduates. In a world that seems to be that of a man, and often touted as one, women across the globe are taking the lead and are not shy about it. Aisha Awal is a mother of three. She shares her experience within the two weeks of training. My area of perspective on this training is uh, POP. The way I see people do it, you understand? The way they do it, I, I liked it, you understand? My baby really give, give me difficult times, but I have to, you know, I tend to, I, would, I, would, I, I used to attend to him and attend to the, to the class too. Conceived in 2016, the artisanship training program has produced female entrepreneurs in tiling, plumbing, electrical installation, among others. The initiative is targeted 
at complementing President Buhari's agenda of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. During the training, the women, if you saw what we, they went through, they were so happy to be here and they are very interested in these threats that are known to be made, made for the men. So when it comes to skills, they are all equal. So we should give the women the opportunity to learn other things. I'm really grateful for being here. I learned what plumbing is really all about. This is actually my first time engaging in laying of tiles and I really enjoyed it, though it's the most stressful. They say they are now agents of economic growth. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. And Jules is where we go next with Sunret as our uncle. Thank you, Nami, and welcome to Joff. The National Metallurgical Development Center, Joff, is working assiduously towards the realization of the objectives for which it was created. Director General of the center, Professor Linus Asuko, gave this indication while receiving the Bongom Joss Star Jacob Gang Buba on facility tour of the center. Alisa Batukai Andrew reports. The National Metallurgical Development Center was established in 1973 as a testing laboratory and research center to conduct test and analysis of raw materials for the nation's steel industry. It was later upgraded with the intervention of the federal government and other stakeholders to improve the performance of the processes used in metallurgical and allied industries. Conducting the Bangam just round operational areas, management of the center says it's working assiduously towards the realization of its goal, calling on stakeholders to sustain their support for the center. Research and development, we need adequate funding. Like I said, we need up to 3 to 4 percent on R&D, GDP on R&D. The Bongon Joss, Da Jacob Kiangbuba, who is happy with the program of the center, notes with adequate support, the nation will realize its dreams of technological advancement. This is a facility that can really increase our GDP if well uh, utilized. Uh, for this, I will lend my voice to appeal to the state government and even the federal government to please look into this unit. The Royal Father urged management of the center to show more commitment to its progress in view of its role in revenue generation. In Jos, Ali Sabutukai Andrew, NTA News. As part of efforts to empower youths and women for self-reliance, Deputy Speaker House of Representatives Ahmed Idris has presented laptops and seats to boost farming activities in Wasi local government area. The report. 75 youths trained in ICT and computer literacy were presented with certificates, laptops and 20,000 naira each, while two bags of maize and seeds with 50,000 naira went to those on rice value chain. The program, facilitated by Deputy Speaker House of Representatives Ahmed Idris, trained 325 beneficiaries on ICT and computer literacy, as well as processing and other agricultural activities. The labor market is highly saturated. That's why he brought this new initiative. We are really appreciative and we feel blessed to have him empowering us in this kind of empowerment because this is not a one-time empowerment, it's a life empowerment. The deputy speaker represented says the initiative is to equip beneficiaries with the required skills to start their businesses instead of waiting for white-colour jobs. They stand on their feet to make sure that they use this uh, training that they were training for in fact, it will sustain them to continue making some uh, large farming and at the same time processing it to another way where they will sell it in a good, uh, very good price. In their goodwill messages, Emir of Wasi and Rekna of Bashar appreciated the Deputy Speaker for the program, which they say will go a long way in addressing unemployment. And that's it from Joss. Nationwide continues after this break. Yemen. Governing Board of Muslim Community Center Abuja, Senator Yuke Umar, on behalf of the board, cordially invite the public to the 30th anniversary celebration of the center, date 29th November 2021, which is equivalent to 24th Rabiul Thani, 1441 after Hijra. Time, 10 a.m. Venue, Multipurpose Hall, Muslim Community Center Abuja. Plot, 
543 Connery Street, Wusezo 3, Abuja. Special guest of honor, Malam Muhammad Musa Bello, Honorable Minister of FCT. Guest speaker, Professor Ibrahim Suleiman, Chairman, Board of Trustees, International Center for Islamic Culture and Education. Topic, the role of Islamic institutions in promoting human development in addressing global socio-economic challenges. Chairman of the occasion, Dr. Tukur Bella Ingawa, Federal Civil Service Commission Abuja. Announcer, Ambassador Sani Saulawa Bala, Wambankasana. Chairman, Strategic Planning Committee, MCC at 30 Celebration. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you operate small businesses, sell, promote, or market product or equipment, rent, hire, produce, offer services in music, food, fashion, film, photography, painting, sculpture, play, drama, comedy, travel, and hospitality sector? Enjoy Nigeria Expo 2021 is here for you to showcase your product, services, and skills. Learn how to grow your business, connect with customers, network with frontline entrepreneurs in your sector across Nigeria. Enjoy Nigeria Expo is holding from December 6 to 12, 2021 at the Abuja International Trade and Convention Center, Kilometer 8, Umariyan Adwa Expressway, Airport Road, Abuja. For inquiry, call 009-114-3424, 009-643-0859. Enjoy Nigeria Expo 2021 is brought to you by Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Welcome to Nigeria Project and Abuja Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Enjoy Nigeria, future assured through cultural creativity. The Mpapuru ruling family of Abagi Kodongwana back local government area of Akwaibom State announced the passing away of their beloved husband, father, grandfather, father-in-law, brother and uncle, Net Reverend Nefio Kedemobut, aged 79. His remains will be led to rest after a funeral service to be conducted by Kwaibo Church 47A Kodokoro Road Abak, Akwaibom State. Date, Saturday, November 27, 2021. Venue, Government Primary School No. 1 Kwaporo Street, Abak, Akwaibom State. Time, 10 a.m. Sunday, November 28, 2021. Thanksgiving service at Kwaibo Church 47A Kodokoro Road, Abak. Time, 10 a.m. Let Reverend and Nephew Okedewo both have left behind his dear wife, children, grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughter-in-law, brothers, sisters, sister-in-law, and a host of other relatives, too numerous to mention, to mourn his demise. Adieu, Reverend Obot, Etia Tenye, Teacher Obot, Sanga Sungo, Signed, Honorable Deaconess Christy Obot's wife, Engineer Betty Obot's son, Chief Mourner for the family. Liverpool will look to mount the pressure on table toppers Chelsea when they welcome Southampton to Anfield. It's Liverpool versus Southampton this Saturday, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. Thank you for staying tuned. The Nigerian Diaspora Commission NITCOM is poised to leverage on the quantum of academics in the diaspora to establish research development center in the quest to provide solutions to the country's challenges. NITCOM Chairman Abike Dabirirewa stated this while soliciting partnership with Set Fund as a recent advocate of research. Abdullahi Musa Slija reports. This inception, the Nigerian Diaspora Commission has been discovering many untapped diaspora professionals which the Commission intends to explore. Based on this, the tertiary education trust fund that champions the advancement of research in recent times comes handy. We want to partner with you and have what we call the Diaspora Resource and Research Center to be the first of this kind in Africa and who knows in the world. I will look at the possibility of a residual fund anywhere that we can give to the University of Ibadan, if it were possible, in the 2022 to support your resource and research facility. In another development, the Academic Staff Union of the College of Education, COESU, has organized a symposium on leadership as an institutional imperative for effective change. What lesson for teacher education in Nigeria? Discussants maintain that teacher must not change even when assumes leadership position. Well, leadership it's about creating an effective vision. And in creating that vision, the leader must communicate effectively and motivate his team members for the attainment of that vision. 
This shared leadership we're talking about is an institution that is not supposed to be a money-making vehicle. In this wise, how do you now lead, look at the leader in that setting? Leadership is about looking for the best to do the most difficult job. The advocate is more attention to college or education sector, given its significant position in the education sector and the society. Abdullahi Musa Sleja, NTA News. A 4.4-kilometer road linking Gombe Road to Maiduguri Bypass in the Bauchi State Capital has been inaugurated by the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad reports. It's a jubilee here in Bauchi as the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar commissions the 4.4-kilometer Gombe Road Maiduguri Bypass link road. Named after him, the former vice president described the infrastructure renewal project of Governor Bala Muhammad as a dream come true for the people. These development projects actually have become instruments of economic empowerment. For too long, Bauchi Metropolis has remained without a bypass on the eastern access to discontent the traffic congestion caused by the movement of heavy trucks into the city centre and the central business areas with attended hazards and inconveniences. I'm glad to say that this road was therefore conceived and executed to address these noble objectives. The governor added that he will not be distracted and will continue to execute people-oriented projects. In Bauchi, Mahmoud ibn Muhammad, NTA News. In times of emergencies such as fire outbreak, building collapse and other natural disasters, there is usually panic which makes swift response to safety measures difficult. It is for this reason that RCL, Safety Centre and Partners, put together a stakeholders engagement to educate the public on how to detect, prevent and carry out rescue operations in times of emergencies, Kenneth Nanim reports. Prevention of fire outbreak, incessant building collapse, workplace violence, bomb threats, and common natural disasters may not be feasible because of some human errors, as identified here by safety experts. Lives are going down. Properties are being lost. So if we change a little bit orientation of going away from how do I make money from safety and take safety as, as it is, and it's, it's not just a job of the, biz, the government, it's everybody's business. What the public should do to prevent, detect, or mitigate damage during emergency situations is a major concern at this forum. It is critical that we know how to do, what to do, when to do, who to call, how to call, when to call, when such happens. 112 is one of the technology, the tool that you can use. Even if you don't have credit, just dial the 112 and you get response. If it is fire, whatever, then you get a quick response. Attention is also being drawn to the need for proper and effective structural design of facilities that will assist in containing emergency situations as well as enhance safety evacuation of persons, especially the vulnerable. Training and retraining of the relevant personnel on handling of safety facilities and deployment of technology in emergency rescue operation, the forum identified as key. How many safety courses are carried in our universities? We have engineers who don't understand what safety is about. So it plays out in the job front. So we have to go back to our educational system. You might be a safety professional, you might know all what that is required to do in an unsafe situation. What about the artisan? What about the low, the junior staff of yours who might not be aware? When they were discussing, you saw somebody saying that a, a fire extinguishing ball had been in the office for so long and somebody as big as a director didn't know what it was meant for, what it's used for. Here, the public is also urged to desist from crowding areas of emergencies only to take pictures. Rather, be part of the rescue operation. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And that story closes the chapter for Nationwide today. We thank you for watching. 
Remember to always join the NCA in its campaign against rape and rapists. Have a good evening.